Like hi, good buddy. Goodbye, Maynard. No, Dub, you got it all backwards. You're only supposed to say goodbye to somebody when they're leaving. Good thinking. Goodbye, Maynard. <laughs> Why are you so mean? So that's her sweet, lovable... Oh, what a dumb question. What's her name? Mona Monahan. And Maynard, she's the loveliest creature you ever saw. Aren't they all? No, this one's different. Aren't they all? Never mind. <laughs> Anyhow, she's going to meet me here any minute now to talk about our plans for the sophomore spring dance tonight. So would you flake off, please? Can't I stay around and watch you make up lies? <laughs> make up lies? Maynard, what are you talking about? Well, the tickets to the dance are going to set you back around ten bucks a head, true? True. So for that much loot, you ain't taking no chick to no dance, and I want to stick around and watch you worm your way out of it by making up a lot of lies. <laughs> Maynard, do you honestly think I'd pull such a low, shabby trick? You bet. Maynard! Don't you? You bet. <laughs> all right, all right. But the important thing is that I figured out a very clever scheme to con Mona out of going to the dance tonight. It... Oh, here she comes now. My sweet, gentle, unsuspecting darling. Ooh. Ah, Mona, my angel, my tiger, my dove. Drop the sweet talk, Buster, and let's hear the big fat lie you've made up to con me out of going to the dance. <laughs> person. I'm opposed to double talk and deception and lying, except to girls. And that isn't really lying, it's, it's salesmanship. What's the use kidding? What I have is a smooth line, and they swallow it every time. Nobody would swallow a line like that except some lame brain drip. I swallowed it. See? Proof positive. Maynard, don't be so helpful. Mona, I'm telling you the truth. The only reason I'm not taking you to the dance tonight is because you've got a Latin exam tomorrow, and if you don't study tonight, you'll flunk. She's got you there, girl. I'll pass that Latin exam without studying. She's got you there, Dove. How can you pass a test without studying? You got me there. I'll pass by getting the answers out of a pony. A little horse that can talk Latin? <laughs> Maynard, a pony's a Latin book with the English translations printed right under every line. You don't have to do the translating. The book does it for you. Oh, that's dishonest and unlegal. It's disgraceful. Where do I get one? Now look, Dobie, you're not fooling me for one minute. You couldn't raise the loot to take me to the dance, so now you're trying to alibi your way out of it. She's got you there, Dobie. Maynard. Honest, Mona, my lamb. I'm concerned only with your welfare. I mean, surely you can see that cheating on this exam could start you down the road to ruin and self-destruction. Me? Ha! Huh. Uh, don't you recognize the pattern? First a little carefree cheating, then a playful stab at larceny, then a frisky embezzlement, then a heist, then a hijacking, then a full-scale robbery, then flight from the police. Terror, always running, always afraid. Don't you see where it all will end? On the late, late movie with James Cagney. Me? <laughs> I'd like to say a few words. Of course, my sweet, repentant dove. As many words as you wish. Oh, just two. Bye, sucker. <laughs> it just isn't fair. Nobody in this whole world believes in honesty anymore. Hark there. I believe in honesty. And I believe in you, Dolby Gillis, because you believe in honesty. You, Eloise McInerney, the most square-shooting, most decent, most sensitive girl on campus? Also the most honest and straightforward. You, Eloise McInerney, the three-time winner of the True Blue Award, believes in me? She's built good, too, for a girl. <laughs> I overheard what you said to that poor, misguided girl about honesty, and I knew instantly that you'd become a decent, true blue, upright boy. Him? Oh, come now. Yeah, Eloise, I am, of course, flattered beyond words, but this is such a shock. I mean, for years, you've hardly spoken to me. True, but that's because I remember that once in kindergarten, you took three cookies from the cookie jar when the teacher said you could only have two. Oh, well, I was only a child, then. As the twig is bent, so grows the tree. And since I myself am so decent and true blue and sensitive, I never forget anything that would indicate a lack of these noble qualities in others. <laughs> how observant, how admirable. How spooky. Dolby, tell me true. What was it that brought about this great change in you? My upstanding, decent family tradition asserted itself. Take my father. No, thanks. I got one. <laughs> Dad's the most honest, trustworthy man in our whole neighborhood. People admire him for his fine, honorable character. Name me one people. Yeah. Come, Eloise, I want you to see for yourself where I get my admirable inner decency. I want you to meet my father, Honest Herbert T. Gillis. No kidding. You mean you can really fix this traffic ticket for me? <laughs> Do it, Herb. My sister-in-law Margie works in a courthouse. She yanks the cop behind the file, 
Nobody knows the difference. I don't know. It seems kind of shady, Charlie. What's shady? It's using their head. The smart guys don't pay their traffic tickets. Oh, it's only a $10 fine for parking in a no-loading zone, and uh, I think maybe I'd better pay it. Thanks, anyhow. Hey, Hub, what's got into you? I mean, what about your health? My health? Yeah. Putting something over on the police department gives some guys a good, healthy feeling right in here. It's even better than a good steam bath. Now, what about it? Um, it kind of bothers me, Charlie. Herbert T. Gillis, you're a great American and a heck of a good sport, so I'm going to call Margie. Besides, I don't want no large brother of mine paying a ticket. It don't do my reputation no good. <laughs> I'd like to talk to Miss Marjorie Ronk in a traffic court. Yeah, I'll wait. Hi, Dad, Mr. Mulcahy. Dad, I'd like you to meet Eloise McInerney. I've been telling her all about you. Oh, I'm very glad to meet you. I hope you didn't exaggerate too much, son. You know, sometimes it gets embarrassing the way he idolizes me. He does have great respect for you, Mr. Gillis. Mm, but, Nat... Yeah, Dad, I was telling you. What's Eloise. he been doing, bragging about how I keep myself in tip-top physical shape like a guy half my age? Listen, hit me in the stomach just as hard as you can. It won't hurt. No, thanks, Mr. Gillis. Uh, Dad, what I was boasting... Hey, hold, hold it. I got Margie on the line. Margie? It's Charlie. Hey, listen, you remember my friend Herbert T. Gillis? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Charlie's that's fixing his traffic. Kind of get used Barbie. to it after yeah. a while. Yeah, Eloise. Margie. Uh, hey, you know what? Uh, Eloise, I've got a great Dad, idea. Let's go take a walk someplace, huh? Right. Right. Hey, baby, how about invite me for dinner? Okay. I can tear up the ticket now, Charlie. Tear it up. Margie's gonna take care of everything. <laughs> New Year's Eve! <laughs> hey, you know it does give you a good feeling, short change in City Hall? Right in there! <laughs> I'm astounded at what I've just seen. Oh, I don't blame you. I'm a pretty shrewd operator, huh? Oh, and to think, Dobie, I believed in you! Poor, decent, trusting, sensitive me! I'll never, never have faith in anyone again! Yeah! Bye forever! Yeah! <laughs> Eloise, I've got to talk to you. There's nothing I care to hear from a person who is not honest, decent, and true blue. You better quit, though, because you got your pegged. Honest, Eloise, I can explain. I know within my sensitive soul that in time you'll be just as unworthy as your scheming, dishonest father. You better give up, though, because you got him pegged, too. Mm. <laughs> Eloise, do you mean that if my dad reformed, you could trust me again? It's possible. Aha. Aha. Now's when you pull the bull over her eyes, huh? Maynard, that's wool and quiet. <laughs> Eloise, my dove. Dad's so sorry for what he did that he's going to unfix the ticket. He's going to demand that he be allowed to pay the fine and take his punishment. Oh, how wonderful. I'm thrilled. I'm pleased. I'm thunder. I'm struck. Well, Toby, if your father pays that fine, I'll be convinced he's honestly trying to reform. Eloise, thank you for your confidence. It's heartwarming to know that you have faith in me. Oh, I do, Dolby. Complete and utter faith, and you'll bring me a receipt for the fine. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Goodbye. Mm, goodbye. 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 Dolby, do you really can get your father to do that? I mean, considering he's so mean and rotten. Of course he's gonna do it. Dad may be hard-headed sometimes, but he'll always listen to a reasonable request. Hmm, sometimes I am hard-headed, but I will always listen to a reasonable request. Now, what I'm requesting is well, I want okay. you... Okay, I've listened to your request, and the answer is no. <laughs> no offense, boy, but whenever you have a request, it always winds up costing me money, and uh, when it comes to money, I am, well, uh, shall we say conservative? Well, um, shall we say cheap? <laughs> Let's put our cards on the table. Dad, look at me. What do you see? Oh, a medium-sized fellow. Maynard. Me. <laughs> Dad, what I'm trying to say is that I'm just an ordinary fellow. There's nothing exceptional about me. I don't have any special talents. I'm not exceptionally handsome. I don't have great connections. Also, you're not too bright. With these qualifications, <laughs> you wouldn't think I'd have much chance to get the loveliest, sweetest girl in school, but I do. Oh, that a boy, son. If you'll help me. Oh, you bet I'll help you, boy. Uh, thanks, Dad. I know I haven't always done the best by you. I'll buy that. But uh, <laughs> I've always done the best I could. And if there's anything I can do now to make up for what I didn't do, just name it. Unfix a ticket. Unfix the ticket? Your head I'll unfix. <laughs> yeah, you've got to do it. I told Eloise what an honest man you were. Then I bring her in here and she finds you fixing a ticket. Well, who can blame her for walking out on me? Dad, I've got to have Eloise back. Life without her is just a hollow mockery. Won't you unfix a ticket for me, Dad? Please, Dad? Who ever heard of unfixing a ticket? It's... it's crazy. I see. Thanks, Dad. Come on, Maynard, let's go. Yeah, just a minute, boy. You're right. There I go again, all talk and no action, like usual. 
I'll do it, sir. Oh, great. You know, I always figured that the right to fix tickets was one of the things I was fighting for in WW2. That was the big one, you know, with the thing and stuff. But uh, this time I won't let you down. Oh, thanks, Dad. You won't regret it. It'll be easy. You'll see. Oh, sure. It's a cinch to fix a ticket. How hard can it get to unfix one? <laughs> Yeah, I want to pay a traffic fine. Dad, I'm proud of you. You know, you should be, son. I'm a great American and a heck of a swell sport. Let's have the ticket. Well, uh, we seem to have misplaced it. Oh, no, Mr. G. Don't say you took a ticket and went... Happy! <laughs> <laughs> I'll dig out the copy. What's the name? Krebs, your clerkship. Maynard, please. <laughs> the name is Gillis. Herbert T. Gillis. Just tell me how much the fine is. Let me pay it and get out of here, huh? Gates, Gilhooly, Gimmerhorn, Gluck. Nope. No ticket for this. Boy, that march really come through, huh? Let's go, son. I'm a free man. Yeah. Could my father have a receipt, please? Look, Sonny, I can't give him a receipt unless he pays the fine, and he hasn't, so goodbye. But he wants to pay you $10. You better grab the loot quick, lady. This is a television first. <laughs> no offense, friends, but I got work to do. Uh, Ma'am, the receipt, please. Weren't you paying attention? No ticket, no fine. No fine, no money, no money, no receipt. Goodbye. Now, just a darn minute. What kind of discrimination is this? I happen to be a citizen and a taxpayer and a veteran with the Good Conduct Medal, and I got just as much right to be punished and pay a fine as any other criminal. <laughs> You're not getting a receipt until I see some good green cash right in my hand. Uh huh. So that's how it is, huh? What, Dad? Uh, listen, that weeping willow of yours thinks I'm a crook. Bring her down here and introduce her to the bride of Jesse James. Uh, how about a $10 receipt for 15 bucks? You're kidding. 20? Now, look here. 25, and that's my final offer. Hold the phone. I gotta get this straight. You'll give me $25 if I give you a receipt for a $10 fine? Right. Right. Hmm. This sounds fishy. Never mind that. Have we got a deal? Wait right here, huh? I'll be back in a minute with the receipt. Dad, this is sure big-hearted of you. Yeah, $25 worth of big-hearted, son. When you are dealing with Herbert T. Gillis, you are dealing with a big operator. Big-time operator, huh? <laughs> Already you look suspicious. That's the man, officer, the one with the sneaky face. You hey, rhyme? <laughs> no, the other sneaky face. What? Now listen here. You don't look too bright, Mrs. Quimby. You sure he's the brains of the game? He must be. Look at the other two. <laughs> He's the brains. <laughs> okay, big time operator. What's this caper you're trying to pull with the traffic ticket receipts? What caper? I'm just trying to pay a traffic fine, that's all. You ought to pay 25 bucks for a 10 buck receipt, right? Right. This thing could be bigger than the Brinks robbery. I can't even figure out what the crime is. Something evil's going on inside that criminal head. Look at the look in them beady little eyes. Beady little eyes? They are big and blue, and I've got them on you, so come on now. Oh, this thing's too big for me to handle. I'm going to haul them on down to jail. Jail? Bread and Watersville? Take us to jail. Oh, you should live so long. Don't worry, man. They won't take us to jail. They can't do it. They did it. <laughs> no, do not a prison make more iron balls. Maynard, please, your singing will get us thrown into solitary confinement. What are friends for? Hey, you better let us out of here, Chief, or you are going to get into trouble. Big trouble. I'll call a cop. Oh, a smart one. Huh? <laughs> Me? Oh, come now. It's my duty as Chief of Police to find out what kind of a crooked scheme you crooks are trying to cook up. What crooks? What crooked scheme? Now, you listen to me. You open this door and let us out of here on the double, or we will go to the district attorney. We'll go to the police commissioner, to the mayor. I'll tell my mother. <laughs> oh, hear me good. In my 30 years on the police force, man and boy, I've never come up against such a screwy case. Hey, Chief. Paying 25 bucks for a $10 receipt? Must be some brilliant scheme for milking the public. But what? 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 Hey, Chief. I've got to find out it's driving me batty. Come on now, confess before I throw away the keys, you conniving chiselers. Uh, Chief, give me a chance and I'll explain exactly Chief, what here's the answers to that all-points bulletin I put out on these suspects. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-oh. I wired their description to 40 major cities. So? 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 Nothing on these two. What about the one in the end? 18 cities wired back. His description was impossible. <laughs> well, you gotta be good at something. <laughs> You've been getting away with murder up to now, huh? No, and it's gonna be different. You're up against somebody that's tough and sharp and 100% of the ball. Now's when you beat him with the rubber hose, huh, Chief? Never mind. <laughs> now, how 
How do you do it? Some clever scheme, huh? How do you do it? Come on, tell me. Please? Don't you see, Chief? There's no explanation for what we did except the truth. Yeah, all we were trying to do was get a receipt for this poor little Eloise McInerney so that... Gillis, I'm getting sick of that story. Chief, you have to let us go. You've got no evidence. Yeah? I'm keeping you locked up in here? No, they're right. I know in my bones they're up to some diabolical scheme, but what can we prove? All right, Gillis. I'm releasing you and your gang for now. And it's the first smart thing you've done all day. Watch that float, Gillis. Because we're going to be watching you like a hawk. Uh, like a whole room full of hawks. Like a whole police force of hawks. Gillis, you're driving me crazy. So I'm warning you, I don't care if it takes ten years, I'm going to find out what you're up to. Chief, when you find out, will you please tell us? <laughs> Right on time. With the receipt for your father's traffic ticket? Yeah, well, the important thing is that I'm right on time, isn't it? I mean, promptness is a great virtue. And neatness, too. I mean, take me. The receipt told me. Where is it? Eloise, you look divine. Let's not waste such beauty, such grace, such elegance on this shabby campus. Come, my sweet, let's taste all the pleasures this great metropolis has to offer. No. You don't want to go? I'll go. The receipt told me. You've got it? You Well, uh, not with me. Why not? Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain. No, it isn't, Dope. What, what happened, Maynard? Uh, <laughs> Eloise, I, uh, I don't quite know how to put it. I do. You lied to me. Oh, no, 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 no. So, where's the receipt? She's got you there, good buddy. Well, it's, uh... You'll have it for me tomorrow, right? Right. Dobie, Dobie, I'm so disappointed. To think I've been going through life like Diogenes. Who? You don't know who Diogenes is? Girl, I just found out last week who Harry Truman is. <laughs> Diogenes was a Greek. Well, Harry Truman's a Democrat. <laughs> Diogenes, I say, was an ancient Greek who searched the whole wide world, night and day, high and low, looking for an honest man, just like I did. And for a moment, Dobie, I thought you were the one. Him? Oh, come now. Well, I could see I was wrong. Farewell, Dobie. Hey, Eloise. No, it's no use. Yeah, I'll have the receipt tomorrow. I swear it. You will? As I live and breathe. All right, I'll give you one more chance, but just one. Yeah, you're all hard, Eloise. Except for furry eyelashes. Tomorrow, you have that receipt, or it's absolutely, positively the end. Yeah, I'll have it, I'll have it. See that you do. Mean and I'm gonna get that receipt for Eloise tomorrow. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. No, I'm not. No, that's my case. No, Maynard. Back over Miseryville. Not as long as there's breath in this stubborn body. Eloise is the most important thing in my life, and I'm gonna get that receipt for her, and nothing can stop me. Nothing, do you hear? Nothing. You were telling me how nothing was going to stop you. Maynard, never mind. Dope? What? How long you been a rat? <laughs> Maynard, I can't afford to lose both of them. But what Eloise wants is an honest man. That lets you out. What Mona <laughs> wants is somebody sneaky and crooked and dishonest. That lets you back in. You bet. <laughs> I know exactly how I'm going to get her. Like how? Like watch. Ah, Mona, my lovely, I've been thinking about you. Naturally. All the boys do. Uh, I've also been thinking about what you said yesterday. Oh, you're so right, Mona. Honesty's for suckers. Oh, but yesterday... That was yesterday. Today, thanks to you, my eyes are open. Today, I'm a new man, ruthless, corrupt, crooked as a dog's hind leg. Hey, I once found a little lost dog, but he didn't have a crooked hind leg. I mean, oh, he was a cute little lost dog. He had cute little legs and a cute little nose and a cute little tail and a cute little badge. A cute little badge? He was a police dog. <laughs> Sayonara. Oh, man, I sure did love that little lost dog. You know, and he loved me, too. I mean, he licked my face and I licked his face and he brung me sticks and I brung him sticks. And man, I sure wish I could have taken him home. Well, why couldn't you? Yeah, Mona, you'll regret this. Oh, oh, but I'm interested. Maynard, why couldn't you take the little lost dog home? I was lost, too. <laughs> See what you mean. Yeah, now, where was it? You were crooked as a dog's hind leg. Hey, yes. did I ever tell you about the little lost dog? Yes. <laughs> Go on, don't you? Yeah, uh, like you say, Mona, honesty's for suckers. Boy, am I glad I kicked it. Now all I do is cheat and steal and connive and... And lie? Yeah, all the time. The truth never passes my lips. Honest? Honest. You're lying. No, Mona, honest. I'm telling you the truth. Well, you just said that the truth never passes your lips. Yeah, how about that, though? Were you lying when you said you were lying? No, I was telling the truth. Well, then you weren't lying. Yeah, I'm a little confused. Oh, it's real, real simple, good buddy. You see, if you were lying when you said you were lying, then you were telling the truth, which is a lie. And if you're lying when you're telling the truth, it has to be a lie because the truth is a lie when you tell the truth. If a truth is a lie, <laughs> a lie. 
Uh, Mona, could we start again? No, Dobie, we could not start again. If there's anything worse than a good, honest man, it's a bad, dishonest man. And you, my friend, are both. Goodbye. Thanks a lot, pal. Oh, uh, you don't want her anyhow. She's a sneak and a liar. True. So are you. No offense. <laughs> no offense. So now what? So now I've got to get Eloise back. But to get Eloise back, you're I've got to make my father get a receipt for that traffic ticket. Mm, any ideas? Not a one. You? Me? Oh, come now. Maybe Dad will have an idea. Him? Oh, come now. It's possible. Possible, my eye. I tell you that this time I got an idea that can't miss. Well, son, uh, let's put it this way. It may be just a little sneaky, but it can't miss. I want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Well, this one is really a Lulu. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is a gem. Mr. G, you can't park there. You'll get a ticket. That's my idea. Huh? Oh, good thinking, Maynard. You're a bright boy. Me? Oh, come now. Oh, I get it. <laughs> when I give the receipt for the ticket, you're going to get right now to Eloise. She'll think we did exactly what we promised. Right. I got it up here. Huh? Gee, I got to give it to you, Mr. G. You got one of the greatest criminal minds in the whole North American continent. Never mind the cowards, <laughs> Maynard. Hey, here comes Gogarty now. See how they're always Johnny on the spot when you do something wrong? Oh, we're in. Hey, look, Gogarty. I parked in a no parking zone. Where's my ticket, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, no? I mean negative. Uh, uh, not on your life. I wouldn't give you a ticket if you parked your truck in the mayor's kitchen. What kind <laughs> of a public servant are you? The kind that obeys orders. And my orders say not to get messed up with you birds until we figure out what you're up to. <laughs> now, just a darn minute. I am a peaceful, law-breaking citizen, and I got rights. <laughs> hey, Herb. Herb, I've been looking all over for you. Well, I ain't been looking for you, so goodbye, Charlie. You better stand here, and you better listen to me. Listen to you? I'm through listening to you. I should have never listened to you about fixing that ticket. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The ticket was never fixed. But you said that your sister-in-law was gonna go down there and... Margie didn't fix the ticket. She said she was gonna. She even went so far as to take the copy out of the file and put it in her purse. So what happened? Well, her, when she left work, she was kind of like walking along. She came to a prayer meeting. She kind of just standing there, you know, listening. And she got to thinking maybe she was doing something wrong. So she went up to the top of Powderhorn Hill, you know, sit around, commune with nature, search her soul. So what's she finding? She found out she was doing something wrong. So she said she was going to put the copy back in the file. Except when she's up on top of Powderhorn Hill, she gets a cold and has to go to bed. Liquid diet. But she's back at work now, huh? She is back at work. The copy's back in the file. Uh, she told me to tell you she was sorry. But she has to live with her soul. Now, you'll understand, huh? Dad, now you can pay the fine after all. Yeah, ain't that wonderful? They gotta take my money this time. Come on, boy, let's get downtown and straighten this thing out, huh? Hey, all that talk you gave us before about trying to fix the ticket, it was true all the time, huh? Sure it was. We wanted the receipt for this sweet, sensitive girl. Then you're not a gang of slick international criminals. Us? Oh, come now. I knew it all the time. All together, the three of you couldn't fool a patrol of campfire girls. Well, oh, thanks a so lot. Come on, son. Uh, just a minute, Gillis. Do you see that no parking sign? Uh, we were just leaving. Just leaving ain't soon enough. I'm writing you a ticket for just as No, but we don't need a ticket now. Forget it. Forget it, nothing. I'm writing you a ticket for illegal parking, for violation of Section 208, parked on the wrong side of the street, for Section... But of course, my sweet. And then some. That's what happens, though, with the truth. Remember, one false word and I'm walking out on you forever. My angel, I would never mutter a word in your presence. It was not the utter truth. You see, Dad went down to the courthouse to pay his fine, and they thought he was the brains of a very clever gang, and they took him down to headquarters. Boy, it was exciting. The chief thought he was a big international limb. <laughs> Eloise, hey, come back. Look, Eloise. <laughs> I was telling the truth. Why wouldn't she believe me? Would you? No. I rest my case. Ah, <laughs> uh, what's the use? I, I just don't have any luck. Well, cheer up, good buddy. You still got me. Yeah, like I say, I just don't have any luck. <laughs> <laughs>